Hey guys, what's up and welcome to a brand new episode of Geeking Out. We have changed the name, but it is still the same awesome show as before. We got a really great episode for you today. It's more of a filler episode, just catching us up and or catching you guys up and seeing what we've been up to since the last episode. So with that being said, I am Matt. I'm Mittens. And let's get into it. So what do we have up first today, Mittens? Uh, well, first, we're going to start talking about the news that we've missed so far since it's been about a week and some change since we've been on. we got quite a few things to talk about. Yes. Um, it looks like we have uh, Evil Dead the Game came out while we were uh, yes. taking a little on sabbatical. On Friday the 13th of all days. And yes. what's funny is the game was supposed to come out in February of this year, but they delayed it to May May 13th. And everybody's like, oh, why, why are you delaying it? I think they had some stuff to do with it. and. Keep in mind, delays is going to come up a lot in this episode today. So just keep that in mind. Now, they Word delayed today. it. Yeah, they delayed it to May 13th, which everybody's like, oh, Friday the 13th. Ooh, that's spooky day, you know, because it is Friday the 13th. Now, I have been playing through Evil Dead the game since last, well, since it released last Friday. Really fun game. I'm really enjoying it. Actually, I don't think it, by the time this goes live, it won't be last Friday anymore. But it, it's a fun game. It does take a lot from. Friday the 13th, Dead by Daylight. Uh, I want to say Predator Hunting Grounds as well. Yeah, Friday the 13th, the game is kind of in in limbo right now because of some real life lawsuits going on with the creators. And that's a whole other story for another different set of podcasts and stuff. But um, they had to basically put the game on hold. There's been no developments on that since then. So everybody's been going to Dead by Daylight playing that. Now, this game does feel a lot more like Dead by Daylight, except I sue me i didn't like dead by daylight the little bit i played of it i could not stand it this game is like that but so much better it's also like friday the 13th but so much better because you get to choose through about eight ten different characters i believe it is and there is a story mode but the game is mostly multiplayer and when i say story mode it's very light on the story the cutscenes are basically just a graphic on the screen that says what's going on, what you're supposed to do, here's your objective, do this, do that. And it serves as like a tutorial of sorts. Now, yes, there is a tutorial in the game. It's kind of, it, it, you have training wheels on in the tutorial, I'm not going to lie. There's a path that's showing you to go this way, around, that way, do this, do that, do that, do that. Um, the single player missions are pretty fun. They're like basically multiplayer matches without other players. But you can complete them in about 10, 20 minutes. Um, and then if you die, it's basically game over. You got to start over on the missions because there is nobody to help you and revive you or anything. So they're fun. And each one of them takes place in a different part of Evil Dead movies. So I've only played through three, two of them. And you've probably seen them already on the channel. I did episode one, which took place in Evil Dead 2. I did chapter two, which took place in Ash vs. Evil Dead, which is the TV show. The current one that I'm about to record is... Army of Darkness, which is one of my favorites in the entire series. So that's going to be fun. And then I'm not sure what the others are, but the cool thing about it is if you want to play certain characters, you have to play through the mission mode to unlock those characters. So if you want to play as Pablo from Ash vs. Evil Dead, you have to play through, I think, the fun, or the last mission in mission mode. There's six of them, but the last one is basically locked and just says coming soon. I don't know if you have to complete all five first and then it unlocks or if it's one of those things it's like later in the you know dlc line it's gonna pop up and give you some extra characters to use so right now it just says coming soon and it doesn't have anything that says what or implies what movie it's going to be now when it comes to the multiplayer side of it you can play as either the survivors or the demons and here's the best part of it you can play with ai bots if you do not want to play with other people i've been playing through the ai Very bots nice. and uh, Either way, I, I've never, I have yet to win a match because I, when, once you get to that end part, it's a tough one. Now, the, the point of the game is to basically find three pages of a map or three pieces of a map to find out where a dagger and the Necronomicon are from the movies. The, uh, I forget the name of the dagger, but it's the, uh, I want to say the Katarian dagger, Katharian dagger. I got to watch the movie again to see what it was called, but it, I'm drawing a blank on it. I know it starts with a K and I'm having a blank on it right now, but once you find those two things, you have to go and defeat the demons that are basically guarding the, you know, the book and area and right. So that's the spot where it can get very challenging because in the tutorial, it was easy and there weren't deadites running at me left and right. In an actual game, there are deadites running at you left, right, up, down, front, back, and then the basically the boss of the level so each level has 
certain boss. I've only seen Evil Ash from Ar Army of Darkness and then his two minions, which are these giant deadites, and those guys are pretty tough. So they're very hard to, if you're not careful, they are they could wipe you out in no time. Just, you're done. Um, and it's good to have other people playing too. Like, that's one of the things I like about playing with the human people or human players is because they'll revive you easily. If you have AI players, they might not revive you easily because it's AI players. But um, you also got to watch out because sometimes they can get possessed. And when they're possessed, it's probably for about, I want to say, 30 seconds, maybe 30 seconds to a minute, they're possessed. And you have no control. If you get possessed, you have no control of what you're doing. It just does it for you. It starts attacking your teammates for you. And you're just like, oh, crap. What am I supposed to do? Because it happened last week to me when I was playing. I got possessed and my teammates shoot me. I was like, please stop. Please stop shooting me. I'm not trying to do this on purpose. <laughs> So the best way to, I guess, strategize in that game would be definitely having comms with people that you're playing with so that you know when they're possessed and if they're coming after you, right? Yes, that is true. But every game I've played, nobody had a mic. So I was just like, damn, it is what it is. I think um, I don't think you can die when you've been possessed. I, I didn't at least I got possessed. And then uh, probably about 30 seconds later, I was back to normal. And I was like, OK, cool. I'll Go right to doing what I was doing, and then I got hit, and I was bleeding out, and people were trying to save me. They were getting hit, too, and I was like, well, this match is pretty much shot. We're done here. Um, now, it, it is it does play kind of like when you start off, it plays a little like uh, Warzone or any Battle Royale game where you start off with no weapons, and you have to go through and find weapons. The only thing that I really don't like about the game is the fact that when you're finding the map pages or the pieces of the map, it doesn't show you exactly where they are. There's a little thing in the top that says, okay, go to the dead end. There's a piece of the map somewhere in that area. And you're like, oh shit, where is it? And you go over to that area and you're just like, okay, I'm going to walk around until I see where this piece of the map is. And then usually it'll pop up, you know, as you're walking around. And sometimes it's not even in that area. It just says near, which means you have to go further down the road to find it. And then you'll finally find it. And you're like, oh, here it is. And I've wasted 10 minutes trying to find this damn piece of the map. Yeah. That's that's something that just gets on my nerves because you're wasting time trying to find it. But once you do find it, like sometimes somebody else will find it and you're good. And then each match is about 30 minutes. I don't know what happens when the timer runs out because I've not had that happen. I've always either died beforehand or somebody left the match and they, they got booted out and screwed us all, like screwed the whole match up. So we couldn't really do much of anything there. But I, I do like that. I like that you can go find weapons and you do find your legendary weapons as well. You'll sometimes see those. And uh, one cool thing is the human players that are demons, they can possess trees. So you'll be running around and a tree will just and grab you. And you're like, oh, Jesus, what the hell? Um, oh. If you've ever seen Evil Dead, that that's something that happened in the movie. Uh, I, I'm not good with horror, so I'll probably never play it. I mean, I'm perfectly fine watching somebody play it. Yeah. But just the panic of being surrounded by like deadites or are mm -hmm. they like zombies? That's kind of what they are. Yeah. It was definitely, okay. it was definitely, it's gotten me a few times. And there's, there's sometimes where you can hide. If you've seen Evil Dead 2, you know, Ash cuts off his hand. Sorry, spoilers to a movie that's been out since 1987 or whenever that movie came out. <laughs> uh, he cuts off his hand and it, it became possessed. So he cut it off. Now there's times where you see a chest and you're like, okay, cool. There's a chest here. I can get some loot. You open it up and the hand pops out and just grabs your face and everything. Uh <laughs> and... It happens with that, and it also happens with the little tiny ashes, which I think were in the TV show, and they might have been in one of the movies too. And they jump out and start crawling over whoever you're playing as, and they start freaking out. It was it was one of those things. I'm just like, oh, damn it! I thought there was something in there, not a bunch of little tiny mini me's and a hand that's gonna you know choke me or something. So that's something that you never know when it's gonna happen. And there is a trophy for hiding the hand inside a chest and then having somebody get scared from that hand. Um, there's also the ability to drive vehicles because the maps are so huge. It's not always the same map. I think each one of them is a different area from a movie because there were some maps that took place from the TV show. There were some maps that took place from the, uh, second and third movies. Well, actually, no, just the first and second movie. I don't think I've seen anything that was army of darkness related yet, except for the characters. And it's just a really fun game. I'm definitely going to try and do some matches, you know, online and then record them for you know youtube or i might even just do an ai match here and there just do that knock it out after i'm done with the uh, mission mode and everything but um i'm hoping that the game you know 
at least you know lives on a little bit and it doesn't like die off anytime soon because a lot of these times these games they, they come out and it's it's a death wish for some games that are multiplayer only because they'll if the if the user base isn't there then it's you know done like i don't hear anything about predator hunting grounds anymore friday the 13th i already mentioned the reason why there's not much going on with that game so it's just basically dead by daylight and that is it it's like all these brawler games they flop because they're not super smash brothers I feel like for someone who loves a good story to uh, such a short story um, would be kind of anticlimactic to me, especially since there is such big lore behind this series mm -hmm. uh, with the movies and the shows and stuff like that. You would think they put a little bit more effort into it. It sounds like the maps are so massive, too. Does it is there like if it's a battle royale ish? Um, does it have like something that closes you in or are you just welcome to go anywhere, everywhere at all times? I don't think I've gotten to that in any of the multiplayer matches yet, but there is, and I'm assuming if this is happening in the mission modes that it's going to happen in the game also, there's one area within <clears throat> the current mission that I'm in, you get enclosed. And okay, I take that back. Yes, there are areas where you'll see smoke around the, the area, but this only happens in mission mode. Like I said, I have not seen it happen in the store, in the multiplayer yet, but it'll close you in and you have to defeat 12 deadites before it can open back up. And sometimes they're just throwing the big ones at you. And you're like, shoot. So basically the brutes from Halo. You got to fight three of those at once. With a puny shotgun and a chainsaw. And it's just like, oh my god. And so I was recording one episode. And I kept dying. And I said, you know what? We're going to start it over. Because I don't want to. There's no checkpoint in the, in the mission mode. So if you die, that's it. You got to start over. And I'm sitting there going, well, okay, let me start it over. And I thought, okay, maybe I could just splice it together. I was like, no, 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 no. We're going to do one episode and one episode only. That's it. So when it comes to the multiplayer, yeah, I don't know. I think it's one of those things where when you do something in the mission mode, it unlocks in the multiplayer. So chances are that might happen, but I have yet to see it happen uh, in the multiplayer. It's just easy to get lost. And one of the times I was playing a match with some people, we all got in a car. And I'm trying to drive to where the, the they basically put a waypoint and everything. I'm trying to drive to it, and I'm going all different directions. I'm like, where the hell is this thing? And I'm opening the map trying to find it. And I said, okay, I'm going the right way, but this road is going all over the place. And I'm like, I don't know where I'm going. So, yeah, it, it can be a little tedious at times inside of the map. But, you know, once you figure out where you're going, it's not that bad. And I just need to play it more to memorize the maps. But like I said, they throw you into a different map each time. And... A lot of them are the same, just one of them has snow, one of them has this, one of them has that, and you're just like, God dang it, what, where am I supposed to go? Yeah, yeah, I do th that. they probably have a couple of things they're going to have to fix on that, especially with uh, maybe more character selections or maybe like special abilities or something like that, because I know in um, different other like games in that same genre, um, there's usually something that you maybe specialize in as that character and you benefit the team in some way, shape, or form compared to somebody else. So, yeah, they have a bunch of different ver variants of Ash. They have, obviously, Ash from the TV show, Army of Darkness, Evil Dead 2, and then Evil Dead 1. Um, the thing is, when you're playing a match, and the cool thing was I got a um, code. You know what? I'm going to show you right now. I got a code from the game that is basically you play as... And the code's already been used, so I'm not going to show y'all. Um, it is Ash from the, the Night Armor and then the S-Smart at the end of Army of Darkness. Now, I thought, okay, if I'm playing as one of those costumes, then nobody else is going to play as that character. I, I, I thought different costumes meant different characters. No. I played in a game where everybody was Ash, a different version, and I'm like, well, crap. So I played right. as Kelly from the TV show, who I actually liked that character more because her... Finishing moves are that much more awesome. That's another thing. You have to do a finishing move on all the enemies and everything. And some of them are just brutal and gross and disgusting. And I would not expect anything less from this series to be disgusting and brutal and gross. It's just awesome. But like you said, I would have rather much had a... And a lot of people said this too. They would have rather much had a legit single player to this game. And not just multiplayer only. Usually when games get announced like that, like when they announced Friday the 13th, I said, hell yeah. Oh, it's multiplayer only. Yeah. Not so sure about that. Ghostbusters. Yeah. Oh, multiplayer only. Predator. Made by the Friday the 13th guys. Oh, multiplayer only. 
Yeah, but it's like, if they're going to maybe make it an MMO or something like that, something that's going to be so massive and have all these side quests, if you're going to make it multiplayer only. So I think that's why they added the AI offline bots in this game is because they're like, look, the servers could go down, you know, at a moment's notice, you know, it's not active anymore. They shut down the servers. It gives you a reason to still play the game in some form in the AI offline matches if you're playing that way. I wish Friday the 13th had done something like that where you can still play as a counselor. Now, I don't mind playing as Jason, but I also like running from Jason too. And those servers are kind of hit or miss now these days, like for Friday the 13th. I thought they were shutting them down, but I was playing on a Switch the other day and it was still trying to find a match for me. I was like, well, I don't want to find a match. I just want to play the game. So, yeah. And they did add, they were going to add a lot of stuff to that game. They were going to add a single player mode. I believe that was going to be a story mode and then all the crap happened in real life with the creators and everything. And they had to shut everything down. Like they haven't even made a movie. They shut down the movie they were making. They had to shut down everything that was related to Friday the 13th. That was new because one writer was mad. He wasn't getting the proper recognition for writing the first script. So, you know, but that's been resolved. So we'll see what happens with that series. I mean, I'd like to have another game, but you know, that, the first Evil Dead game that came out was Hail to the King on the PlayStation 1 and Dreamcast. It sucked. It controls like crap. I'm still going to play it for the channel, but it controls poorly. Then they made another one, Fistful of Boomstick, another story-related game. That one was more of like a... I don't know if you remember the game State of Emergency. It was like a GTA you just go through and causing havoc. It was kind of like that. It was a little light on the story, but it had fun gameplay. And then there was Regeneration, which was the last one to come out before this one. And that was a story-based game, which felt kind of like the suffering. And each one of them was trying to basically capture that feel and, and give something to the fans that was a story game. So I guess this one, they were just like, hey, you know what? You know what's hot right now? Multiplayer games. Let's make a game. Yeah. Let's make it multiplayer only. So we'll so see So you happens. like it. So you I, like it. There's some iffy parts about it, but you like it. I, I'm having fun with it, but there's some parts that, yes, I'm iffy on and they can work on, like the 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 finding the pages and everything. They could probably patch that and make it a little bit easier to find them. Like I, They could have put in a ping system, too. Just hit a ping and find out it pings all over the map, and you can kind of see the area that it's in because some games do that. I think... Um, Assassin's Creed recently did that. Assassin's Creed Odyssey. They do that in a lot of their in their yeah. in their games. Yeah. Odyssey Origins and Valhalla have done that, where you hit the I think L three button and it'll ping, or push down or whatever on the D pad and it'll ping and show you all the treasures that are in that vicinity and you can go find them and just keep pinging until you find it. So they could have just done something yeah. like that, maybe add that in, but I don't know if that's easy for them to do now that the game's already done and finished and out the door. I mean, they probably could. They probably could add another. System. It's a new game. They're still working out the kinks. They're still adding stuff in. There's there's a season pass right now, but I'm not going to get it because there's really no reason for me to have it right now. There's nothing out. I don't even know what's going to be in the season pass. They don't say on the PlayStation Store. It does not say what is in the season pass. It's just it's thirty dollars. I'm like that's way too much for too right much. now. <laughs> way too much. I already paid twenty bucks for the game because I had a Target gift card. I used it to pay for half of the game, and then the other half went to my card and everything. So there it is. Evil Dead, the game. That's my favorite character right there. <laughs> I actually met her in real life a few years back. She's pretty cool. I like her. So that's so, it for that one. Um, yeah, next, um, you know what we like to talk about, the PlayStation Plus. Yeah, we are coming up with PlayStation Plus news again. Um, so they did release the list of games that's going to be out on playstation plus i'm actually going to look that up real quick i want to get your thoughts while i look this up what do you think of the news on the playstation plus stuff that's coming out let me let me look it up as well <laughs> so we're reading along at the same now i'm not going to go over every single list every single game um but i do want to see there were some games that i did really enjoy that i was like heck yeah I'm glad we're getting it. This is awesome. Um, so, okay. I have a list here. And if you have one, I'm going to go ahead and just, you know, go over it now. So, a lot of the PlayStation 4 and 5 games are games that I already have. Games that we've already played. Like, Alien Nation is one that's fun. It's a game that's like Dead Nation and uh, Super Stardust or Returnal. If you play Returnal, it's the same people that made that game. Uh, we also have Assassin's Creed Valhalla. 
uh, Balan Wonderworld. I don't know what that is, but a lot of people talk bad about that game. Uh, Bloodborne, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, very fun game. Uh, Call of Cthulhu. Uh, these, these are games that are going to be available on pretty much all the the tiers that are not your main tier. Well, I think your main tier you're getting just PlayStation Four and Five games, but this is these are the games that are going to be across everything pretty much. Um, and I'm just naming off some some you know games that I'm familiar with here. You got Control, Ultimate Edition, Dark Siders Three, and Dark Siders Genesis, Death Stranding, and Death Stranding Director's Cut. Demon Souls, which I believe is the remake, and that's pretty cool because it's not available on anything plus or PlayStation Now or anything. So that's pretty cool if you want to play Demon Souls and you know die to your heart's content. Um, Everybody's Golf is another one that's pretty fun. It's basically Hot Shots Golf, but it's a new version of it. You got Far Cry 3, Blood Dragon, Classic Edition, Far Cry 3, Classic Edition, Far Cry 4, uh, a bunch of Final Fantasies, uh, Final Fantasy B I I I, I'm guessing that's eight or nine. I don't know Roman numerals after a certain number. Uh, remastered. Yeah, that's seven. Seven. You, no, no, no. Oh, well, three eyes. It's uh, eight then. Okay. So yeah, you got Final Fantasy seven and eight, and I think nine too. I think all three of them were on the the service already. And then you have Final Fantasy X one and X two remastered. I recently got those games on PlayStation two. Um, bunch of Final Fantasies. Fifteen is in there. Uh, for Honor, if anybody's still playing that one, Ghost of Tsushima, Director's Cut, PS4, and 5, God of War, Ghost Runner, which is fun, but very fast-paced game, um, Horizon Zero Dawn, nothing about Horizon Forbidden West yet, just keep that in mind that it's going to probably be later on. Um, Some really cool games up here already, like yeah. the Marvel Spider-Man, both uh, the first infamous, one and Miles yeah. Morales. Yeah, Infamous First Light and Second Son, Injustice 2, Kills on Shadowfall. Um, Resident Evil. Yeah, Resident Returnal. <laughs> Returnal, and a lot of these are going to be games that have been out already. Red Dead Redemption Two was one that everybody's like, "Oh yeah, Red Dead Redemption Two, Saints Row the Third. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and skip over out of there because there's a lot of PS4 or Five games here that basically anything that's released on the PS4 or Five since launch is going to be on this, except if it's a game that's been out within the last couple months. Uh, so don't expect anything from this year to go there day one. They have said it's not going to be like Game Pass where games drop day one. You will not see God of War Ragnarok day one. You will not see Spider-Man 2 day one. You have to shell out the money for those. Yeah. Or wait. Um, it's also going to offer game trials. So you got Cyberpunk 2077, uh, Lego City Undercover. There you go. For for Horizon, for Horizon, Horizon Forbidden West game trial, Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection, WWE 2K22, Tiny Tina's Wonderland. I might play that one. Um, a lot yes, of dude. yeah, a lot of really awesome games here that are going to get game trials. And then we come into the classics catalog. Now this is your PS3 stuff, your PS3, PS2, PSP, PS1. You have Ape Escape, Batman Return to Arkham, Batman Return to Arkham City, or Arkham Asylum and Arkham City. And I'm pretty sure Batman was up there at the top too. Uh, Bioshock Remastered. So these are some PS4 games that came out recently too so yeah. i think they're saying classics because they were out on the ps3 and then they remastered to ps4 uh some new games got announced disney pick stars toy story 2 buzz lightyear to the rescue i'm gonna play that one that game uh, oh man that was my christmas of 1999 but i played it on x uh, xbox n64 uh, you got hot shots golf intelligent cube jack and daxter one two three and jack racing jack x racing um that's going to be the ps2 versions so if you guys remember, there was PS2 on PS4 classics that came out back in 2016, 2017, I believe it was. And they released PS2 games on the PS4 with trophies. Now, they are releasing these games, which some of these games are trophies. Um, Siphon Filter is the only one that has been announced as having trophy support. And you better believe I'm going to platinum the absolute shit out of that game. <laughs> um and I might even restart the whole playthrough I'm doing on YouTube for that one because some games they said are going to have updated frame rates, updated resolution, and the best part of all is some of these games are going to be available for sale outside of this PlayStation Plus Premium. Now, that, that's not even the best part, actually. <laughs> if you've bought any of these games previously, you will get them in your library at no extra cost. So I saw that and I said, oh, holy crap, I've got 10 awesome. years worth of PlayStation games PlayStation 2 games, PSP games. I have 10 years worth of those games. Ever since I, over 10 years, I got my PS3 in 
2008 and I was buying PlayStation one games basically from the second week I had that system till now, pretty much. So I like that. And this is something that has me thinking, this is why you can't do a lot of stuff with the PlayStation three store, because I tried to buy a game recently and it says you are no longer eligible to add a credit card to the thing. You have to use a gift card. So they're trying to shift that away and get rid of it because they want people to get this service. That is my only guess is what's going on with this is they want people to get this service no matter what tier, uh, preferably the big one, the premium, they want everybody to get that tier so that they can get the games that were on the PS3 network and on their PS3. I'm I'm totally fine with that. I am so excited for that. I know some people have said, why would you want to play older games on a newer system when you can play newer games on the newer system? That's not the point. Point is, my PS3 is struggling to read any, to grab any discs right now. It's just like, oh, kill me, basically. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, geez, this thing is so difficult to take a game in and ps4 is eh, ps4 just sits there and doesn't i'm looking at it right now and i'm like you just you, you your, your younger brother the five is taking care of the games for you so i just like that you know they're giving us the options to play these games again with trophies so far it's just siphon filter but i will not doubt i won't doubt that they will not add trophies to other games because if they're adding these games as a separate purchase like, if you can purchase these games separately, they're going to get trophies. Yeah. PlayStation is one of those companies where if you get a game on your system, no matter what kind of game it is, you're getting trophies. And I think if some games have less than a certain, like, if it can be completed in a, under, like, a certain time limit, it does not get a platinum trophy. And there's some PS2 games that do not have platinum trophies, which is weird. Like, I don't know why Max Payne doesn't have one, but all the GTA games have one. If you still have the PS2 GTA games on your PS5 or 4, and you don't have the definitive, it still has a platinum Jack and Daxter. They all have a platinum. Red Faction has a platinum, weirdly. So that's what's going on with that. And they said it, about the middle of... So each month, you're going to get the new games, the new PS4 or 5 games. The middle of each month, you're going to get your classic games. So we'll see. So it's going to be kind of like um, two each month or something? Or is it going to be... It sounds like and it's, it's going to be like Nintendo, what they're doing. Okay, and and you're always going to be able to play these games, or are they going to take them away occasionally? That's the thing. I'm not sure on that. I think if they do it like Nintendo, you're going to be able to play these games at all times. I think they're classic games. They might not take away. I think they want that to be the incentive to get this premium package is so that you can play these games. But I'm wondering how many of these are going to be sold separately. Yeah, you don't know. Yeah, you, you, know just, what to know. you don't know. And I really think that the classic games, they're going to try and keep those um, on there the most so that people can come back. Now, the newer games, they might take away some of them. Like, we already know Metal Gear Solid 4. Oh, my God. I forgot what Metal Gear Solid was. 4 is leaving PlayStation now as soon as this service goes. Actually, no, it's leaving at the end of the month on Friday, I believe. it's, Or if it left already, it might have left. Uh, let's see today i think it left today the playstation now which sucks for anybody who wants to play that game if you can't find it dig or physically you have no choice but to play it digitally and i don't think the game's that hard to find in stores i think you can still find it in like some retro shops and stuff but not like gamestop they don't sell ps3 stuff as much anymore but yeah that the game's gone it's it's off the service and it's one of those games where you're like why don't you guys just remaster the damn thing and release it but that was kojima's baby he's not with konami anymore and i don't think they're gonna released his game without his permission kind of thing so yeah we'll see what happens with that and it is it's it's interesting it, it will see what happens um something interesting i saw here too in other news the twisted metal tv show is cast nev campbell oof, mm, sorry uh, as raven um elsewhere the trophy lists are available for ps1 classics trophy integration blah 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 so we're getting a twisted metal tv show with uh nev campbell and anthony mackie and somebody else was added to i don't remember who it was but that's gonna be interesting i don't know where that's gonna be streaming but i'll watch it and it might suck. metal as in the game with the cars oh my yeah. gosh i love that game so oh, much <laughs> who was it that got added and i said that's probably sweet tooth damn it <gasps> i forgot who it was um I'll have to look that up real quick and see. Only clown I'm okay with. Um, we said metal. <laughs> he's not even a cool clown. He's just who mean. Who was it that got at? Oh, it's gonna be on Peacock. 
Oh man, I'm not gonna get Peacock. I have everything else. I can't get it's anymore. gonna be on Peacock. Let's see who's the cast we got so far. Uh, Anthony Mackie is John Doe. Okay, okay, that's interesting. Nev Campbell is Raven. I don't remember who Raven is. Stephanie Beatrice is Quiet. Thomas Aiden Church is Aiden Stone. That's who I thought was gonna be Sweet Tooth. Damn it. Okay, he's gonna be the the corrupt cop. Um, and no Sweet Tooth. No, no Sweet Tooth yet. No. Not yet. Yeah. At least. And it's so being out of this Cobra Kai right Okay. Sorry. Continue. That's interesting. That's interesting that they're gonna make a show of it. I don't know how I feel about it. Um, being on Peacock because what what kind of budget are they gonna have? Um, how where are they gonna graphics and stuff gonna be? Yeah. I mean, the chases you have to do, the big explosions, everything. It's gonna be a whole shebang that I'm not sure Peacock is gonna be available to do a really good rendition well, well i mean we'll see we'll see what happens because if it's universal they might have the budget they might have yeah. the budget a little bit um so we'll see what happens with that um also in other news on the playstation plus stuff the same day that they released that list it was announced that ubisoft plus which is their streaming service is going to be added to the basically top tier so if you're getting uh the premium you're going to get ubisoft games with your service as well so you're going to get all their games plus the playstation games and they have said that some classic ubisoft games are going to be available on the service don't give a shit what they are i want splinter cell i want prince of persia that's it i don't want anything else i just want those two series i mean because we haven't had a splinter cell in god knows how long we're getting a remake of the first one but it's been almost yeah. 10 years since we had a new game it will be 10 years next year that the last game came out uh, the last new splinter cell game came out and then this uh, ubisoft was like oh you want splinter cell Okay, we're going to throw Sam Fisher in uh, Fortnite. We're going to throw Sam Fisher in this other stupid game that nobody played. We're going to throw Sam Fisher in Ghost Recon and Division. We're going to throw him everywhere but his own game. And it's like, why are you doing this to us, guys? We want a Splinter Cell game. You're giving us crap. And a million Assassin's Creed games. Oh, well, yeah. But um, <laughs> in South Park, the Fractured Behold. Okay, South truth, Park. Okay. Like... <laughs> Those games. Yeah, I'll give them a pass on that one. Because South Park. I love South Park. Um, I have the original South Park game on PlayStation 1. That was not Ubisoft. That was a claim in it. Oh, it was hot garbage. Oh. Hot garbage. But it this, was like Turok, but worse. But Ubisoft, you can do... They have their own subscription service or something like that. Yes, too, and, so. and that's what it is. It's being added to PlayStation Plus, so you get to play all okay. of their games. It's like when EA Access went to Game Pass. Okay. So, so, the only so thing, actually you're saving money, but not really. Kind of, yeah. So you're the you, only thing we're missing is EA All Access or whatever it's called. We're missing EA Access to be added in. I wouldn't put it past them to say, oh, yeah, bring it on in. But I feel like with it going to Game Pass, they're not going to try and compete with Game Pass that way. They're like, okay, well, you got EA. We're going to get Ubisoft where our games actually, you know, I wouldn't say they matter too much more than EA games. But Ubisoft has had their um their their games where you're like, oh, God, what is this? And then EA has had their games where you're like, oh, God, what is this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. You know, we'll see what happens. That's cool. We'll see what happens. Because I mean, if you if it's the top tier, you're paying like one twenty five a month or something crazy, or one twenty five a year, or unless, whatever it was. Unless you already have PlayStation Now and PS Plus, you're gonna get grandfathered into the top tier service at no extra cost. Now, if you have just a regular PlayStation Plus, you're gonna get you basically get to play 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 and pay a difference. So it'll be yeah. another sixty dollars. I have some money saved over. That I'm going to, you know, once the time comes, I'm going to send it on over that way and just pay the difference and everything. I may not get it day one. So you see how my, my uh, wallet's looking that day. But, um, you know, it's another $60. You know, it's no big deal. But the next year, when it, if it turns out to be one of those situations where it's like, okay, all of these games I can play, um, you know, without having to service, like all the PS1 games, I might not re-up the 121. I might just, you know, go back to the standard normal one. But then again, I may end up liking everything. I do like the fact that I can play some of these PS3 games not on my PS3. Like, I really want to play Infamous again, Infamous 1 and 2, and if I can play them on the 5, which I can, it's going to be two of the games that are released. Actually, three of them. They have Infamous 1, 2, and Festival of Blood all released on that PlayStation Plus service day one. Uh, so that's going to be something fun to play, but I'm just not sold on the streaming part of it. I'm not sold on being streaming the PS3 games because... I tried it with PlayStation Now. I did it last year. No, I did it for about a year and a half. And I was like, this is stupid. I can play these games on my PS3 without the lag. I can play these games on my yeah. PS4 without the lag. Actually, 
most everything you can download except for the PS3 games. They said those are the only ones you have to stream. Everything else can be downloaded. Um, my only other thing is, can I copy my PS1 saves to my PS5? Because I've been rocking that Resident Evil 2 save since 2000. All right, I want to use yeah. that game save from 2000 and throw it on my PS5. Let me be able to do that. Um, which I have a memory card adapter. If they do let me do that, I can just poke that thing in via the USB and boop boop boop. Copy on my You're ready. Oh, I am ready. <laughs> I'm ready. When I got the PS3 and I said, I do not want to start these games over again. And I went to GameStop. I said, hey, do you guys have a thing? I'm trying to copy my, I want to get my PS3 or PS1 saves on my PS3. What do I need to do? And the guy's like, oh, we got this little thing right here. Uh, it's this adapter. And you just pop the memory card in, plug it in through the um, charge cable and copy your saves. And I have all those saves backed up on a USB too. <laughs> Ice. Nice. So I've been yeah, rocking well, with the 20 years of PlayStation One saves. <laughs> the list, the list seems pretty decent um, for now, and this is not the definitive. So there's going to be more added um, slowly but surely through time and stuff because they're going to go through this list pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, the, get, so the Ubisoft going, thing is pretty is pretty cool um, because like you would be saving money in one end and mm -hmm. then dropping it onto the PlayStation. Yeah. Um, plus games list and stuff like that. So that's, I understand like how cool that's going to be. Um, and like you said, if you're just paying for the basic and it's $60 mm -hmm. a month added, it's just like you're, you're buying one game a month is how you can view it. Like 60 bucks. That's, that's how much game is. So yeah, it's really not that big of a difference if you do it that way. Um, it's just a hard hit unless you're grandfathered in that I'm still worried about. Even though these yeah. games are awesome, this list is cool. Um, there's a lot of games on there I haven't played yet that I definitely do want to play. Yeah. I still, I'm not completely sold yet to open my wallet and say, take my money. Yeah, no, I'm definitely going to play a lot of those games. Like, I've never played Ape Escape. I always wanted to check it out. And I saw some gameplay. I was like, that looks interesting. I might check this out. Like, I might do it as a first impression for the YouTube channel. Like, for the channel here, I do a lot of first impressions sometimes. That might be a game where I'm like, okay, I've heard a lot about this. Let's check it out, see what it's like. See if it's something I would want to do a playthrough of. And then if it's not, I have the first impression. And people see what my first impression is of it. Um, there's a lot of other games in there, like Intelligent Cube. I've played once and I died. I didn't even know how that stupid game worked. I was like, how does this game even work? I'm confused. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of games in there. And I, I'm wondering, and I saw a, a video on this too, where they said they wonder if the reason there hasn't been so many games announced, like so many classic games announced, is that maybe they're trying to add trophies to those games before they put them in the service. So, like, okay. they could be trying to get Metal Gear Solid on there, but they need to add those trophies first. Oh, God. Oh, my God. I will play through that game in a heartbeat with trophies. You better believe I will play through that <laughs> game with trophies. I've played that game so much to death. I will play it. Every nook and cranny of that game, I will play it to get trophies. Same with all the Resident Evils. Now, here's something I'm worried about with the Resident Evil is that it's, it's going to probably be, and if, you, if you're a fan of Director's Cut, and you're a fan of the original Res... I'm sorry. If you're a fan of the original Director's Cut and Resident Evil 1, the 1996 version, and you are a fan of that music, I am sorry to say this, but it's probably going to be the DualShock version, the one that everybody dislikes because of the music. The game is fine, but the music is just like, what the hell happened to the music? And it has to do with the composer being like, I'm deaf, I can't hear the music, let's just do this. He wasn't deaf. He was not deaf. He just is lazy. Um, okay. And it's like, why didn't he just, why didn't they just use the music from the old games? I think they needed to re-record re it for whatever reason because it was a DualShock version. Something happened there. And it's like, why are y'all not just using the original? Why did you have a butt trumpet in the basement area? Because so, everybody likes butt trumpets. <laughs> I mean, you go to the basement area, it sounds like music's farting. <laughs> right? And and Julia's sitting here la laughing at me like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> But trumpets. <laughs> <laughs> um, but and I get it. A lot of people they did not have the original versions. They did not have the version I had. That was their first version, so they had no idea that there was a. I mean, I'm not saying the original soundtrack is you know a masterpiece. It had some moments where you're like, "This is very B movie," but that was like low budget B movie. It was like Killer Clowns from <laughs> Outer Space, bad. Um, yeah. So it's probably gonna be that version. So I'm just saying, if you're a fan of the original or even the first variation of director's cut we're likely not going to get that version we're going to get the dual shock that's it that's the one we're going to get um we'll probably get the dual shock version of resident evil 2 totally fine and if you are looking for that unlimited ammo cheat there is a video in my little playlist or a little 
little plug there to go check that out if you want to see the unlimited ammo cheat. Um, so we'll get those games, and we'll probably get the good version of Code Veronica, which is the not PS3 HD version. That one was just bad. Um, very dark. Very Couldn't really see what the hell was going on in that game. So when they released the PS2 Classic on PS4, I was like, oh, I can see everything. I can see all the goggles do everything. <laughs> um, so I'm interested to see what games we get. And I know they, they rated the other si- Siphon Filter games. Uh, one, two, three, not three, uh, and the two PSP games. We'll probably get those at some point with trophies. I just don't know why three was not listed in there. Um, Abe's Odyssey got announced today. Leaked, I'm sorry. Uh, Rage Racer 2 got leaked. So we're going to be getting those as well. So we'll just, we'll see what happens with the service, you know. And like I said, or I didn't say this yet, but we're going to try to do like a what's new on PlayStation Plus and what game you should check out on PlayStation Plus. I want to do a, a segment in that when it releases and then. You know, if you if you can't catch the you know podcast, just know that I'm going to cut these parts out and put them as their own videos too. Uh, they'll still be in the podcast if you end up watching it, but just letting you guys know ahead of time, there's going to be separate spots too if y'all want to, you know, check out the smaller micro episodes, you know, if you will. Uh, um, so we'll we'll see what happens. And there was something else I was going to say, and I lost. Oh, Silent Hill. Uh, that's going to be a tough one. That is going to be a tough one because they lost the source code. I think what's going to happen with this service is anything that was released prior to this on PlayStation Network is going to be released here. And then they'll probably add some new games that weren't released in the network. So you got Maximo on PS3 as a PS2 classic, but it never came to PS4. But Silent Hill, I don't think we're going to get all of them. We're probably going to get the first one in Origins and maybe Shattered Memories at most or the HD collection, but they lost the source code for all those games, so don't expect to see... That's probably why they're remaking Silent Hill 2, so that they can release it over here. Um, I'm all for the remake of Silent Hill 2, but a lot of people are kind of up iffy on the developer. It's the people that did Medium, so we'll see. So see, don't we'll expect see. Silent Hill right off the bat. You know, The only way to get that is if somebody's nice enough to <laughs> lend their disc out to Konami. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, that's about all I had on the PlayStation Plus stuff. I mean, like I said, we're going to, this is probably going to be a section or a segment where we talk about it too. And I kind of want to do segments of like Nintendo Switch Online stuff too. And then what's in your Game Pass? I want to, I don't want to limit it just to PlayStation. I want to be able to talk about all the services and all the games they have. Because um, I just got the Switch Online N64 expansion pack, not the one that's in my N64, but the actual digital uh, expansion pack. Because I wanted to play the N64 games, and unfortunately, I can't get a stupid controller right now because they sell out like that, you know, like in a Thanos snap. Um, so thankfully, I can use my GameCube controller, my wireless one for those games. And the, I mean, yeah. the, the list is a little small now, but I'm hoping we get at least like Castlevania. Yes, I love Castlevania 64 and Legacy of Darkness. Don't judge me. Okay. <laughs> uh, a lot of people hate that game, but it's it's a fun game. So we'll see, we'll see. And I want to do each one of these sections or each one of these lists you know, for each service, like who has what this week, who has what this month, you know? Yeah. So we got a, we got a release coming out. Yes. The release date was actually released to us. <laughs> uh, Gotham Knights is getting, is, well, it was, it always had a release date of October 25th, 2022. Uh, it was supposed to come out last year and it was delayed. I was not again, delay. That's, that's, the, Oh, you said the second word of the day. Ah! <laughs> um, <laughs> It was delayed last year to this year. And then Suicide Squad was also supposed to come out this year, but it's been delayed to next year. But we'll talk about that one later. Um, no, they they finally, when the pre-orders went up, they showed gameplay for it. It looks interesting. It's not going to play too much like um, Arkham. It looks like it's going to play more like uh, Horizon or Assassin's Creed because the gameplay they released in 2020 for the game I was watching it and it looked a lot like, you know, you would go to certain areas and fight enemies that were higher level than you were. And I remember Assassin's Creed Origins, Odyssey and Valhalla all have that setup where you even Division has that where you go through and fight enemies that are a higher level than you. And you're like, oh, crap, they're going to kick my ass. Yeah. So I like the Spider-Man Sp- Spider-Man. Exactly. Yeah, I, I like yeah. that the games are going to the game's going to be like that. I wasn't too sold on the gameplay they showed this year because I'm like, this person doesn't know what the heck they're doing. They do not know how to play this game. It looks like (laughs) it was, it was, it was tough, but I'm going to get the game. I'm going to stream it. Um, You get to play as four characters. You can play as Barbara Gordon, Batgirl. 
I believe it's Tim Drake as Robin, Jason Todd as Red Hood, obviously, and then Dick Grayson as Nightwing. So you get three Robins and one Batgirl. And I don't know how the story is going to play because it's not made by Rocksteady, but Batman is still spoiler dead in the yeah in the in the the game. So I wonder if they're kind of linking it to Arkham Asylum, not Arkham uh, Arkham Knight, and then making its own thing because this is the same team that worked on Arkham Origins, and a lot of people hated Arkham Origins. I loved the crap out of that game; it was so awesome. But it's the enemies is going to be um, Court of Owls. So we'll see what happens with it. Right. So far, they've only showed uh, Nightwing and Red Hood gameplay. I'm waiting to see Robin and Batgirl. But I believe if you pre-order it now, you get a pre-order bonus motorcycle to use as you're going, like, basically, you know, going through the Gotham Traveling. City. Yeah, and you, you get a flat, uh, flast, you get a fast travel um, with uh, every character. They only showed it with Nightwing, and people were comparing it to the glider in Fortnite. I said, yeah, but cooler because it's Nightwing. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they throw Nightwing in uh, in uh, Fortnite. They're actually talking about throwing Robocop in Fortnite. I'm like, why? 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 He's not a, he is not a kid friendly character at all. And n- none of the kids will actually know who he is. It's like when they put Mike Lowry from Bad Boys. I'm like, what the hell? That why? What? So some of those characters in that game that they throw in there, I'm like, these kids aren't going to know who this is. They're not going to know who. Mike Lowry is. They're not going to know who RoboCop is unless their parents showed it to him, which, you know, if you did, you're an awesome parent. <laughs> so that is basically it for the gaming news. Um, I kind of jumped ahead on the TV news when I saw the Twisted Metal stuff. I didn't mean to, but um, the Resident Evil Netflix trailer has been released and uh... disappointment written all over your face. Yeah. I, I said I was going to give it a chance and I saw that trailer. I'm like, what is this? A lot of people are not happy with it. It does not look good at all. It's like set in the future. And I'm like, huh? Ugh. What is this? And I'm just, I'm confused. I still, like I said, I like the actor that's playing Wesker. I will watch it for him, but the trailer just didn't look, it did not sell me at all. Like not like welcome to Raccoon city. When I saw the chair, I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah. We got us a movie, even though everybody hated that movie. I loved it, but, the, and I won't, I promise I will not go on another Resident Evil rant, but the you trailer, the trailer just, ugh. Okay, well, trailers are trailers, though. Yeah. Like, it's not going to be the full thing with the story and everything else going on. It's just the flashes of here and there, but like, if the quality of what it's portraying doesn't look very good, I mean, they can always, and I don't know, tweak that a little bit to make it look better but it's just going to be the story and everything that you really want to look for yeah. when you watch like the first episode. And this one is, if I'm not mistaken, taking place and following the original movies, the um, Paul Anderson movies, the ones that I ranted okay. about in episode two. So yeah. we'll see. We'll see what happens with it. But look at what happened with Cowboy Bebop. I know we talked about that in the previous episode. Look what happened oh. with that. And it got canceled basically in season one because the fans were just like out crying just not having it i i love cowboy bebop the anime like from the few episodes i saw and i didn't get to watch the show because i was just like it's just got too many too many negatives for me to even want to watch this uh and then they said it's canceled i was like oh i ain't watching it now um i still have not finished episode one of halo i'm sorry i will oh my god the last episode was so good i i started i was like I said, you know what? The other day, I'm like, yeah, man, I should watch some TV. Maybe I'll watch. Maybe I'll finish Halo. Oh, you know what? I'm playing a lot of Lego Star Wars. Maybe I'll watch Book of Boba Fett. And I didn't finish that episode either because I fell asleep. That was my fault. I was tired that day. But um, yeah. Um, so give it. We'll give it a chance. We'll give it a chance. First mm-hmm. episode at least. Um, I mean, it's on Netflix. There's a lot of people jumping from that because of all the craziness going on with them. But I mean, if you're haven't jumped from it, at least give it a try. Um. Just like Halo, there's a lot of people who didn't like Halo, but if you've watched that last episode, it was fantastic, full of drama and just violence and everything that was going on, and like really getting into more of the the actual backstory, but then yeah. flashing to what you can see in the future. And they already yeah. had their next season signed off, so we're definitely going to have a season two. Um, so all you naysayers, y'all better get your ass in check because it is a good show. 
There was um, <laughs> there was one gripe I had about Halo, and that was when they showed one of the assault rifles and it was on the ground. I'm like, ooh, that is probably some terrible G- CGI right there for the gun. I'm like, oh, the rest of it was fine, but that one spot, I was like, ooh, that's just not pretty. That was not a pretty CGI assault rifle. Um, other than gets, that, the show better. <laughs> no, the show is fine. I, I enjoy the show. Um, and and if I want to talk about bad CGI, I'll talk about She Hulk, which really didn't look that bad to me. But that's not this is not a comic book. We'll save that for yeah. another episode when we do our MCU stuff. But like with Resident Evil, if you're not feeling it that day, that release day, just watch Stranger Things Part Two, Season Four, Part Two. Watch that. Yeah, because uh, it, it releases out the same day, right? Same day. And then if you're not a fan of Stranger Things, when it releases next week, just watch Obi Wan Kenobi. Releases same day. God, <laughs> same that's gonna. Day. Oh my God, it's gonna be tough. Which one am I gonna watch first? Oh, we won because I've been waiting. <laughs> oh my God, I've been waiting almost twenty years to find out what happened between episode three and four with Obi Wan Kenobi. That's all I want to know. I don't care about Force Unleashed because they didn't show Luke Skywalker and all that stuff. I want, I want to see Darth Vader, Obi Wan Kenobi. That's it. <laughs> so, well, you're gonna, get it. yeah, we'll get it. But it's gonna be a weekly thing, so it's like, it's the next episode. We'll see. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna wait for that one to end. I'm gonna binge it first because somebody's gonna spoil it. Somebody is going to spoil it somehow, and I'm going to make sure that I'm not spoiled in that show. Um, well, before we're done with the releases, uh, the finale of season one of Halo is this week. It's this Thursday coming up. Um, I of course do the watch party in my Discord, so I'll be definitely seeing it that night when I get back from work be watching it because i don't know how they're going to have a finale after everything that came through this last episode i don't know what they're going to do next i'm just completely just flabbergasted of where they can go from here um but i'm looking forward to it flood what'd you say flood don't i know they haven't done the flood yet they haven't done the flood yet and if anybody doesn't like the flood like me thankfully they'll probably do that next season next season's probably gonna be all the flood um speaking of xbox i think they're rumored to be making a Gears of War movie or TV show. Well, oh, that's what I was gonna say about Twisted Metal was I think it was starting uh, started off as a movie. They realized probably better as a TV show. Well, we saw what happened with Inhumans when they turned it from a movie into a TV show and it tanked. So we'll see on that. Um, because I just watched. I mean, I like I ha- we have Peacock because we have it for free because of our internet provider and everything. So we watched Firestarter yesterday. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. We'll get to that in the what we what we've been up to so uh you want to get into the meat and potatoes of the uh, episode definitely i'm ready for it all right so the the meat and potatoes of this episode is and i didn't want to put it in the news segment because i did not want to take up too much time in the news talking about it even though i kind of went a little long with the evil dead stuff but i was basically talking about my experiences with the game but the meat and potatoes is game delays are they good or bad for games now what are What are your thoughts? Well, first off, the whole reason I brought this up is because Starfield and Redfall both got delayed to next year. And then today they announced that Forspoken has also been delayed. I don't know until when because I didn't read into it. Uh, That was a game from Square Enix. Yeah. Yeah, it got delayed and they're going to be releasing Final Fantasy 16 instead this holiday season. So that that leads me to believe that Forspoken got delayed to next year. Um, That's a game that looks a lot like Horizon, but with like powers magic yeah magic yeah i don't know see yoshi p is working on 16 so i don't think he's he might be working on Forspoken. i'm not sure and he's the one that pretty much headlines all the final fantasy stuff um he's the one that dropped final fantasy 14 the online game from disaster and brought it back to life so he's actually pretty very pivotal when it comes to a lot of the final fantasy games so that's probably why it's 16 is going to be ready so soon um but for Forspoken, it's a kind of a totally different story than what Final Fantasy and everything else they've ever done goes right. by. They're kind of they're kind of changing up their formula, and that might be the bugs and stuff they're hitting. So I'm okay with delays. I mean, Forspoken really wasn't spoke talked about for yeah. a long time, so well, it's not like waiting on the new Skyrim. We know there's going to be a new Skyrim, but it's been ten years. Like it's it's different. Well, it says here that it might be delayed. And I'm seeing things saying that it, it has been delayed. So it right now it's rumored to be delayed. So disregard what I said earlier. It's been it's rumored to be delayed and that Final Fantasy 16 is going to release in place of it. Um, like you said, though, we have not heard a lot about it. So I would not be surprised if it does get delayed to next year. That is fine. Um, Starfield, 
uh, Starfield and Redfall actually shocked me because Starfield, they were hyping up to release this year in November. They're all oh, Starfield, 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 but we hadn't heard anything on it. And I was expecting to hear some news on it next month when they do their showcase, the Bethesda showcase. But I mean, wh who knows? We might still hear some stuff on it, but we won't see. I mean, possibility with everything going on right now in the world, there's possibility that they just weren't, they didn't want to go into crunch time. And I'd rather, well, no, but this always releases a buggy game, so I'm not going to say I'd rather they not release a buggy game because it's probably going to be buggy either way. <laughs> um, so we'll see with that. But, you know, Redfall, I thought was supposed to come out next year anyways. I, that When they said delayed, I was like, I thought it was coming out in 2023 anyways. But then I remembered we saw the first trailer for that last year, and they said 2022. So oh. um, we, like, again, hadn't heard anything on either one of those games, so I was not shocked by it. I get that people were upset about it, but keep in mind, we hadn't heard anything. I mean, we could have very well heard something at E3. I'm not E3. That's canceled. Um, at the showcase, we could have heard something and gone from there. But they're, I, I'm still curious as to what they're going to announce and what they're going to show off at that thing. And then some people were upset about Dead Space. They said, oh, Dead Space has been delayed. Dead Space never had a release date. It just yeah. said Dead Space. They never said when it was coming out. And I said this in episode two that it was probably going to be next year anyways. I said there's no way this game's coming out this year because we haven't heard much about it other than that initial first trailer and maybe some gameplay stuff here and there. And the best part about Dead Space is it comes out a day after my birthday. So Ooh, that nice. will be a birthday game for me. So there's some games where they finally announce them and people just think, or they finally announce the release date and people think, oh, they delayed it. No. It's not the case. And then there's some games like Cyberpunk that get announced way too early. I did not know that game was announced all the way back in 2012. I thought it was, I first heard about Cyberpunk in 2016 when yeah. it started ramping up when like Witcher was, you know, winding down and, and Cyberpunk was starting to ramp up. That's yeah. the first time I ever heard about it. And so I was like, when was this game even announced? It said 2012. I said, what? Game was announced before Witcher 3 even came out. Like Witcher 2 was coming out in 2012. Or, or the Xbox version came out in 2012. So that's another game that was just riddled with delays. Riddled with delays after delays after delays. And had they just released the game, I'm going to be one of those people. You should have just canceled the PS4 and Xbox One versions. That's what happened with Gotham Knights. They said, look, we're canceling the PS4 and Xbox One versions because we want the fans to have a great gaming experience without being held back by all of the, you know, um, restrictions they had to do because... If you remember, a lot of games that were released on PS4 and even PS5, when they had versions on the last generation, they were kind of held back with some of their, you know, resources that they could have done on the newer ones. These days, it's it's a little different. Like, Horizon still looks fantastic on PS5, and I'm sure God of War Ragnarok will still look fantastic on the PS5, even though they're both coming out for the 4. But I believe... After this year, we're probably not going to get any more of that. There's probably not going to be any more, okay, we're getting a PS4 version of Spider-Man 2. I don't think that's happening. I think that's going to be PS5 and PS5 only. If they didn't yeah. say it already, I think it's going to be only on PS5. Um, but there's other times where, you know, game will get delayed. And it's probably for the better. Uh, so I'm trying to think of a game that came out recently. And it, oh, sometimes, it, okay, here's the thing. If they delay a game a few months out from release, so in, for example, Forspoken or Starfield or Redfall, those yeah. games have been delayed way ahead of their release date. So Starfield was not supposed to come out until November. Redfall, I think, was supposed to be sometime this year. And they just they delayed them to next year. No problem. Then you have Watch Dogs. Delayed a week before release. It was supposed to be a launch title for the PS4. And a lot of people were like, what's going on with this? Why are you delaying it a week before launch? And then the game came out and the graphics were just like downgraded big time from what we saw in 2012 so there's sometimes where if a game gets delayed that close to release you gotta wonder what's going on with it and then sometimes it's fine they're just they're trying to you know work out the kinks and everything fix everything yeah, usually small kinks not usually big kinks yeah and and that's why i said with cyberpunk they shouldn't just the higher-ups should have just let them finish their game because the game could have been so much better when it released. I had a lot of bugs in that game. Like the hair wasn't loading in. The game would stop just to load my hair on my character. I was Everybody like, was bald. <laughs> Everybody was bald. Um, so many issues with that game. And that's the one reason yeah. I didn't play it for the longest time. Because there was so many issues. 
I mean, it wasn't playable. There's nothing wrong with being bald. Is that what she said? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there isn't. But I mean, in the game, you're expecting stuff like that to easily come in. Like, it's it's just rendering. It should yeah. render like that, especially on a brand new game that yeah. just came out and the best yeah. technology and stuff like that. You've been waiting on this game for since 2012. Yeah. Um, and and you, you think it's going to be amazing. And then you get it and it's unplayable. There's yeah. so many people who were like, I, give me my money back. Just yeah, give me and my they money did. back because it's not even worth it. They did give their money back. And, and part of the thing, part of the fun of it was the glitches. Like, uh, there was a glitch where... I called my car and it just drove, it plowed through the walls of the buildings. And, and fi- when it finally got to me, it was all destroyed. I'm like, well, that's not what I wanted. I wanted the car to come to me, you know, not damaged. <laughs> and, and then one time the car ran me over completely. I was like, oh, okay. I'm not going to play this game for a while. I'm going to wait for the PS5 version to come out. So, <laughs> so even the self driving cars in games aren't really good at self driving. <laughs> no, it must have been that iRobot stuff. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, well, the question you were asking was, you know, what, how I feel about being delayed, yeah. like the games being delayed. And I'm, I'm, I think I feel the same way you do. Um, if it's necessary, the fans will wait. They will wait for a game that is playable and is going to be up to par with, with, with their expectations. Yeah. Um, and there'll be some people are going to be pissed off. Yeah, but they'll still buy it eventually. Mm-hmm. Just you know, push it back if you need to, if there are bugs, if things are going wrong with it, you know, do your fixes. Don't yeah. rush it because what you're going to do is end up giving people money back, which is losing you money and maybe leaving a bad taste for them not to come buy it later. Yeah. Um. But, you know, releasing it like uh, Rune Factory 5 that I was talking about a couple episodes back. Same thing. I feel like they released it too soon. Um. I don't know. If they change the formula just slightly, but it was it's not fitting. It doesn't it doesn't click mm-hmm. with the genre or the things that we've been doing in these games since. So it's kind of it's iffy. It's up in the air. You really if if it's just something small, patch it, release yeah. it, and throw a patch out, and that's fine. But if it's something major, cyberpunkish, then hold that, hold it, please. <laughs> well, look at what Sony does. Like they announced their games uh, i remember 2016 was when we got the announcement for days gone god of war spider-man no release dates whatsoever on any of those games so we had no idea when they were coming out and i remember spider-man and god of war came out two years after that they came out so everybody thought oh it's gonna be later this year uh, spider-man all we got was a con- like a a CG trailer. We didn't get any gameplay. I was like, do not expect that game to be out this year because we did not get any gameplay at all. God of War, we got a little bit of gameplay, but still the game was not going to come out until two years after that. It, yeah. At the time, we didn't know that. We thought it was going to be maybe to the 2017. Well, 2017 rolled around and we got Spider-Man. Uh, we did not get God of War footage at... No. I think we did get God of War footage at E3 2017, and then we did not get Spider-Man footage until the following year. And then one of those years, we got Days Gone and Last of Us 2, another game that got delayed a couple times. And the problem with Days Gone was when it finally released, it was riddled with bugs and glitches all over the place. Like, every time I started that game up to play it, it's like, oh, another update. And the update would take forever to, to install because my internet wasn't good at the time. So I'm like, you know what? I'm just not going to play this game until the updates are done running because I could have had that game finished, you know, within the first couple of weeks of buying it and playing it. Yeah. But because there's constant updates and just glitches everywhere, there's still a glitch in that game that I cannot complete a mission because the character is just not there. So I'm going to have to start the whole game over at New Game Plus and try and find and do that mission again. Somebody says, oh, they gave me like the, the longer way of doing it. They're like, okay, just delete this, do that, do that. I was like, yeah, no, I'll just start the game over. No. I'll start yeah. the game over, do New Game Plus, because I got to get a trophy for that anyway. So I'll just start it on New Game Plus, keep everything, keep all my stuff over. Um, so yeah, it, they're good when they need to fix something major or if they realize, oh crap, something's not running right or this game has been blowing up consoles, d- dev kits. Yeah, we need to delay it to fix whatever's happening, whatever's causing these things to burst into flames. That I can understand. Now, that's a that's a good one because I don't want my PS5 or my Xbox One or Series X to blow up while I'm playing a game. Yeah, um, yeah. Because if it's a game that's closer to release and they delay it, then you're like, oh, okay. Now, Halo Infinite, 
that's a very good reason as to why they delayed it because the original footage they showed was I wasn't pretty. It, it looked bad, so they were like, "We gotta delay it." I mean, it, I guess that my eyes weren't working that day, but it looked fine to me. But a lot of people were like, "No, this looks awful. They need to fix this." And they listened. I'm like, okay, you know what? We're gonna delay the game, and we're gonna fix this little issue here. Fix these graphics. Um, even Sonic the Hedgehog the movie got delayed because everybody yeah. was like, "What is this? That is not Sonic." And yeah. a lot of people have this theory that they did that on purpose to show the ugly Sonic. Just so they can get a reaction to see what was happening or what people would think. And then they had the other Sonic ready to go because the movie released like two months after, two or three months after that. So I'm like, there's no way it took you that short amount of time to fix this to look like it does in the movie. So they probably had the other version of Sonic already just to see what people would think of Ugly Sonic. And then they realized, oh God, they hate it. Because <laughs> it was Ugly supposed to come Sonic. out. Yeah, it was supposed <laughs> to come out in November of, of uh, 2019. And then they released a trailer and everybody's like, oh, what is this? So that's when they were like, okay, we're going to delay it. Delay the movie. But And then that's just something minute. The visual appearance of a character compared to the story or the action scenes mm -hmm. and stuff like that. That's like that little bit of a push. Yeah, a couple of months or whatever. Maybe spring of next year. It's understandable. You have a you have a game people have been looking forward to. You are going to sell. You're not going to make it for the holiday season. But that's okay. People are still going to buy it, and they're going to love it that it's right or close to right. Yeah, and then you got the uh, the mother load, the king of all delays, Duke Nukem Forever, <laughs> announced in 1997, released in 2011. That game went through so many delays, so many different versions. It was uh, originally PC, then it went to PS2. There's actually a video out there where you can see all the trailers. From the first one leading up to the final release, and that game tanked so bad. Everybody hated it. Oh. I, I I got it for about $3 at Best Buy. That's It was on sale, like, probably not even two months after it released for $3. I'm like, shit, I'll buy it for $3. Um, and then I got the collector's edition at a, a used bookstore with the statue and everything for, like, $0.99. Cents. So, you know. Wow. Yeah, that was a game that just was not... Did not live up to the hype at all. Um, and it, when a game's delayed that long, just cancel it. Cancel it and start over. Um, yeah, definitely. I think Scalebound was another game that got delayed numerous times, and they just ended up canceling it altogether. Uh, Perfect Dark got delayed a couple times, and that finally released, but that went through a little bit of a development hell, too. So that was kind of a, you know, oh, crap, is it going to release type of situation? There's a whole story behind that game and why it was in development hell for so long. Which I'll talk about later in another episode, maybe. Any more delays you can think of that's going on right now? Um, I can't really think of any more off the top of my head. Um, I I would add, I guess Metal Gear Solid to the list because every single one of those games, well, Metal Gear Solid Two was delayed for other reasons. They had to actually cut part of that game out due to real life uh, situations that happened in 2001. So that was in 2001. There were a lot of games delayed for like serious reasons, and that I yeah. was not I was not faulting the developers for that. They had to delay a lot of stuff to take stuff out, uh, cut scenes out of movies. So there was a lot of reasons that things were delayed in 2001, and that's for good reason. Spider Man got delayed a whole year, I believe, uh, because of that. Yeah. Um, but then the other Metal Gear Solid games, they just kept getting pushed back further and further and further because Kojima wanted to just, he wanted to be the perfectionist. And I think five was probably the victim of that because they ended up cutting a lot of stuff out of that game that didn't need to be cut out. But, you know, it was like, oh man, we just, we, it's almost like there's, there's an ending that's not there for that game. And you're just like, what the hell? So yeah, that's another game that's kind of like, you know, maybe don't delay it so many times. Just, you know, don't announce a release date if you're or, I think the thing with Kojima and everything was I was like, please don't announce your game until it is damn near ready to go because I do not need to see I loved them, but I did not need to see a trailer three E3s in a row for a game that came out two years after that. So like, yeah, the first one was I think the first trailer for Metal Gear Solid 4 was shown in 2005. And then six and then seven and then eight, it came out. And it's like, I just show the trailer 
when it gets closer, we do not need five trailers for one game. That Stranding was another one that did that. The game was announced, I think, in 2016. And then we didn't see the game until 2020. So, yeah. The, sometimes it's just like, don't announce the game until it is ready to go. It is my thing. And then, yes, sometimes that happens. They announce it, and then they have to delay it because something went wrong with the game, and they have to fix whatever the problem was. So, you know, there's those times where it's understandable, but then there's times where you're like, why are you delaying this? I mean, like you said, announcing um, where they don't put a date on it. Maybe they just put, they flash like an emblem of a superhero and then it goes away or mm -hmm. whatever. You're like, oh, they're going to have a game about this person. And like you get super hype about it. It doesn't have a date. Maybe they just want to let you know because there's going to be questions. People are like, hey, why have you made a game about this? Or why haven't you made a sequel to this? They're like, we are thinking about it. We're thinking about you as a fan and it's in process, but we're not sure when it'll be done yet. Yeah. I'm okay with that, too, because that is not a delay, in my opinion. That's mm -hmm. just, you know, we're letting you know what we're thinking and what's in the book, in the works right now. And it's, it's so it's so that you can be a little hype about it and we'll keep you updated as we go yeah. along. Yeah, and, and Wolverine, when that was announced last year, I did not expect it to be released at any point in time uh, because I think they closed that show. No, I think they showed... I'm trying to remember the order of when they showed things at that showcase for PlayStation. I think it was Guardians first, and you thought, oh, Marvel, it's Spider-Man. Oh, it's Guardians. Okay, whatever. And yeah. then you saw the second Marvel thing, which is like Marvel and Sonic. You're like, oh, it's Spider-Man. Wait, what the hell is this? This isn't Spider-Man. I think Spider-Man was shown after Wolverine, but when you saw the trailer, you're like, what the hell is this? This is just a... I legit thought it was a Spider-Man trailer, and I thought, okay, he just kicked everyone's butt in this bar and everything. I said, wait, that's a bar why would spider-man be at a bar and then you see him sitting at the the bar with the cowboy hat i said oh my other thought was okay it's punisher and then i saw the cowboy hat i said ah this is wolverine and people are like i don't know what it is and then you see the claws come out and it, it hyped you up i was like Ooh! you know freaking out yeah and they didn't announce a release date so then later they showed spider-man 2 and they said 2023 now i'm not saying the game won't get delayed sometime next year but they showed 2023 and you thought they're working on this first, and then Wolverine is probably either being worked on right now, or it's going to get started after they're completed with Spider-Man, because they're not going to release both of those games at once. They're going to release one in 2023, or and then the other one in 2024. If they had to push Spider-Man back, then Wolverine will probably come out in 2025. Yeah, yeah. And I'm okay, I'm okay with that. That's not a delay to me. No, because they didn't announce a release date. I mean, for Spider-Man, they yeah. did. So we just know it's coming next year. They did not say when next year. They just said next year. I don't like when they announce dates either, like years, because what if something happens and you have to delay it? Like they had that with Suicide Squad when they announced it in 2020. They said coming in 2022. And I forgot all about it. I said, and when you don't hear, like I started thinking, I'm not hearing a lot of stuff about this game. It might get delayed. And yeah. then eventually, oh, game's been delayed. I thought Gotham Knights was going to get delayed next to next year because I hadn't heard anything. They announced a release date, but we hadn't seen anything until recently. And they're like, here's some gameplay. Go pre-order the game. And that's what I did. That is what I did. I used some uh, birthday money that I had left over. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what's actually new with you this week? What you uh, been new, up to? new with me this week? Um, not a whole lot. I'm still working on Lego Star Wars. I have gotten to the prequel trilogy. And it's really making me want to watch the prequel movies. Yes, I know they're not great. I don't hate them near as much as the Resident Evil movies, but I do want to watch them again just to. It's I guess that that itch. You're like, ah, I got I got that itch. I got to watch the movies, and it's a fun game. I did stream it last week, and I said, oh, you know what? I'm gonna turn the music off so that I can avoid any copyright claims. Boom! Next day, I got a copyright claim. I was like, what the hell? The music's off. Yeah. It's the art scroll. Or the art crawl at the beginning, the the word, the text wall when it's going, tell me like the going thing. up. And I'm like, yeah. oh, really? That really? And I started thinking, oh, they must have thought it was the movie. Okay, so whenever I do the rest of the playthroughs, I am not putting that part in there. I'm just gonna cut it completely out because they blocked the video everywhere. And I was like, oh shit. And it said property of Disney. I was like, oh shit. Okay, fine. I'll yeah. cut that part <laughs> out. And the, the the reason why I won't stream it and cut it out is because the processing for these those videos just takes when you want to cut out a minute worth of stuff, it took damn near all day from 10 a.m. last Friday till about eight o'clock. Or not even that, like four o'clock in the afternoon. It took that long to cut that chunk of 
video out. I was mm. like, oh, damn. So, yeah, I've been playing that. been playing Evil Dead, like I said. I also got Sifu on the PS5. I had a bunch of coupons at GameStop. And I said, you know what? Let's use these coupons on something. I knocked this from $60, $70, I think it was. I don't remember. Down to like 20 bucks. Nice. Um, so that. And then I also got Blood Rain. Right, oh, I'm sorry. Betrayal of Fresh Bites from Limited Run Games. I'm sorry. This is not available anymore. It was only available for a certain amount of time. I think I pre-ordered this last year or earlier this year. And they just now shipped it out to me. I'm still waiting for some games from them that I ordered last year too. Or two years ago, I think. The they cool just, thing they've just they been behind on stuff. It's a uh, you know a, a snatch from a previous episode. We talked about Blood Rain in the movies. Mm-hmm. Um, and it being a video game first. Mm-hmm. And I'm anxious to see what you think of it when you play it. Yeah, I'm going to play that one. And I know that Blood Rain 2 Remastered or Revamped is actually shipped and on the way. I had to order both of those separately because I didn't think they were doing a dual pack and then i found out they were doing a dual pack i'm like you gotta be shitting me y'all <laughs> posted this after I, whatever fine it's fine i'll keep it i'll keep both of them so they're shipping separately um and then i already showed y'all evil dead so i got that too but um that is about it for me well not it for me on the gaming and stuff like um i'm still streaming final fantasy 7 remake on youtube um i know in our last episode i said i was gonna probably stick with twitch i did it for one day and i just i'm not feeling it anymore i'm sorry i can't <laughs> I may do a a stream here and there, like on a Saturday, or if I just want to do a retro night or something. But honestly, I'm just not feeling it over there anymore. Um, The last one I did, I did not have fun with it. And I have fun with the the, uh, YouTube stuff, just because it's still content for the channel, you know, still gets views and everything. So I'm trying to do more of the well-known games, um, like Final Fantasy VII, just doing really well over here uh, i'm really happy with that I'm, I'm enjoying the game uh thursday i'm gonna be starting up cyberpunk and it'll be my technically first playthrough because i haven't played more than probably an hour of that game i think i got up to one certain point and i stopped playing every single time i started the new game i stopped so part of it is like if i play it on a stream that's basically giving me that push to finish the game and i yeah. think the reason with these open world games is i get so confused i mean it's not uh, so distracted and you know seeing side other quest, things going quest, on quest. <laughs> yeah i'm like oh side quest and you open the map you're like oh geez louise there's a lot of stuff here let me go see what that is let me go see what that is so i got to try not to do that in the stream and do that stuff off stream and yeah. i'm gonna do that with any open world game i stream so far cry 6 is another one i'm gonna just focus on the story mode on the story missions during the stream and do all the extra stuff off stream and just tell the, the audience here's what happened when i was off stream got attacked by a bear i fell off a cliff <laughs> I this, I that, you know, and I do want to play Days Gone as well. Play New Game Plus for that because that is a game that, like I said before, I want to I want to get that mission unlocked and try and get as much of the map filled out as I can. But because my game save is not really corrupted, it's just glitched, and that character is like, right this character, and I was like, well, I see a chair, but where is he? So uh, that's that's what I'm doing with those games. Uh, I'm still doing my long plays, my retro recaps, my playthroughs. Um, probably gonna be a shit well if you're watching this later it won't matter but i'm probably gonna shift the releases of some videos this week um as far as what i'm watching we are currently watching through the twilight zone the new twilight zone on uh paramount plus it got canceled it's an inch i like it but i'm a little bummed that it got canceled because it's you know a cool setup um other than that we're trying to finish Breaking Bad so that we can and Better Call Saul as we can watch El Camino. Because mm-hmm. um, I haven't watched El Camino and we started Breaking Bad over so that we can be kind of fresh on what's going fresh. on with El Camino because yeah. we, I finished Breaking Bad like two or three years ago and I forgot everything that was happening with the show. So I was like, I need to start this over because I do not remember what happened in that final season. And Better Call Saul is ending this year too. So that's another one that is... Uh, in the works to finish i said i'm watching boba fett halo and hawkeye um every, all the three of those are going to get pushed aside when obi-wan Kenobi comes out i'm just saying that right now um like i said we watched firestarter as well yesterday i, I still prefer the original but i liked what they did with this one zach Efron playing a dad is making me Weird. feel old as hell um <laughs> especially a kid that well i guess it doesn't make sense or it, it does make sense she's 10 around 10 ish and he's like my age so 
Is he? He, he would have. He's, he's he's thirty four. He's really? a couple years younger than me. So he would have had the kid in the movie in when he was twenty four, and then yeah. Lead it. So that makes a little bit of sense. But people were like, "Oh my god, Zac Efron's a dad." I'm like. He if he was so if she young. was a teenager, like she was like 20 years old, yeah, that would have been like, whoa, he's a dad and to a dad to a kid that's you know 20 years old, you know, that would have made me feel yeah. old. But because he was only like he's only 34, it didn't really uh but it, it kind of ended on a cliffhanger, and I'm like, hmm, okay, setting up for a second one, possibly. Hmm, maybe. Um that is it. Um I as far as projects go for me. Like I said, I'm still doing the the recaps, the reviews. I might actually stop doing those every Wednesdays and just I kind of want to alternate between a playthrough and a review because the reviews take a little bit of more time to put together, to record the gameplay, to do the voiceover work and everything. I'm st- yeah. I still have about 3 that need to be 3 or 4 that need to be, you know, uploaded and edited and everything. Uh so you know, it's one of those things where, like, if I don't have a review ready to go on Wednesday, I'm going to upload and uh, post a, a playthrough. Um, yeah. I've been told don't do that because that's going to hurt your view. I don't care. I don't care. I'm going to put the content up. What I'm going to do what I enjoy, you know? Yeah. Um, And then, yeah, the, the podcast is still going to be Mondays. And if there's ever a time where we don't have one, I'm obviously going to say, like I said before, I'm going to put that little piece of uh you know the news and everything on the monday so if you're watching this now just know that the news thing is going to be next monday because there will be no podcast next monday i'm going to go ahead and say that now really? no live no live no live podcast yeah there won't be a live podcast no no, <laughs> no we'll still um, record one but there won't be a, like a new episode uploading on monday on the yeah day. yeah most definitely i agree with that but what about you what have you been up to well, let's see. Well, I'll do last week. So I didn't get to play Tiny Tina's Wonderlands on Tuesday like normal. Um, that was because one of the guys was actually sick. And I don't want to continue the story without them because mm-hmm. the, the other guy, he, there's three of us. Um, one of them is actually starting the game with us and me. And we're first playthrough, haven't seen anything. And I don't want to spoil anything for him either. So we're doing it together. We're a team. So I didn't get to do that. I started playing Final Fantasy XIV online again. So I'm really getting into that really hard. Um, we have a, a free company and we're working hard on building it and stuff like that. It's like a it's like a clan, I guess you can call mm. it. So I've been doing a lot of online stuff. Um, was it last week as well? I finished uh, voice acting recording. So I've been working on that. A lot of voice acting stuff. Um, j- they're they're coming out slowly. They'll, I think the next one will be in July, so uh, I'll definitely talk about that closer to um, what else. I've played and finished Halo Two on Ooh. on Wednesday finally. What, so what did you think of that ending? Because you don't know okay. you don't know what's gonna happen, right? You just you've no. not read any, you've not seen anything from Halo Three. No. Okay. I what did you think of the ending? Because back when that released in two thousand four, we were all like, "Oh, what the hell." We had to yeah. wait, uh, what, three years for three the years. third game? Because <laughs> 2004 was when Halo 2 released, and it ended. I'm like, oh, my God. I had to wait however long for Halo 3 to come out, and it wasn't until yeah. 2007. It was a long, long wait for that game. Somebody somebody in my chat told me about that, and he said, imagine. Imagine being finishing this game and then waiting three years to see what happens. Mm-hmm. And I said, I would, I would probably go crazy, and then I have to replay it again because I wouldn't know exactly where the heck I was. Um, but the ending really... Um, spoiler alert, just in case anybody hasn't played it like me. Um, it kind of sets the stage for, I kind of know what happens in, I think the fourth one, someone told me kind of what happens, but how everybody has separated in this game, everybody's going their own different ways. So I, I I have a feeling this next game is going to be kind of like this one where you were like the arbiter sometimes, and then sometimes you were master chief, but it's going to be maybe Master Chief and another character because they're going to go separate ways. Mm-hmm. You're going to, you need to know what's going on everywhere. Uh, Cortana's still on the Halo and then Master Chief's at Earth. And then was it Keys, Johnson, and the Arbiter are going to the Ark? Yeah. So that's kind of like, that's just crazy to me. What's going to happen to Earth right now? Because he, there's a final battle or something 
go into Earth, and that's where Master Chief's at. And then where the heck is the Ark? And why does it have a kill switch button that can mm-hmm. destroy all the Halos at once? And then that freaky worm thing that's on that Halo, and Cortana's talking to it. Oh, it just, it's so crazy. It, yeah, the third one, I will say it does pick up right where the second one left off. Good, so, good. You know, you know you, you're going to jump right into it. You're going to go right into the action. So that's all I'll say about that is that it ends. But it was a very satisfying ending. Um, Still cliffhangery. No cliffhangers. It ends. But then I was kind of like, uh, well, how's Halo 4 going to even work? So each, okay. each new game that comes out, I'm like, how is this going to work with the way that, well, Halo 4 started the new trilogy, the Halo 4, 5, and Infinite. And I was kind of like, when Halo 4 was announced, I said, how? How is that going to work? And then they they do explain it in 4. But the way 3 ends, you're like, oh, okay, I guess they, there is. They left the no cliffhanger, but they left it open. Okay, so, okay. Just know that they left it open for a fourth game, but which we did not get. And nobody was even asking for a Halo 4 uh, but we didn't get one until we didn't get it until 2012. So the thing was, nobody was asking for the fourth game. We didn't care. We're just like the series ended just like Gears of War ended with three. And then they decided to bring it back with four. And I'm not a big fan of the Gears games now, like four or five, because the series ended with three. It ended for me with three. Why are you trying to bring it back? Yeah, it's because money. I but guess. I mean, top. Halo's yeah. got more lore to it, so that's a little more understandable why they brought that back. I mean, they were still because yeah. when Halo Three came out, then they made ODST, then they made Reach, and then they were well, okay. I take that back. We did get some Halo games in between three and four, but it wasn't Master Chief; it was other characters. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I'm starting Halo Three this week. So Wednesday will be Halo Three, um, and the finale of the Halo series this week. So we're watching that going on, um. Other than that, that's pretty much that's what I'm watching. Oh, I finished MCU stuff. I finished, I watched um, all of the What If episodes mm-hmm. on Disney Plus because that's actually really interesting. Um, it really makes you think about the multiverse mm-hmm. in general. Yeah. Um, so that that was interesting to watch and finish. Of course, the husband doesn't want to watch anime, so he didn't watch it with me. But <laughs> I thought it was pretty entertaining. Uh, I think the next one I want to watch is, um, was it Sh- the Ten Rings one? Oh, Shang Chi. Shang Chi. So that's the next one I want to watch. Even though I've already watched like the Eternals and the newest Spider Man, I still want to watch that movie, yeah. even because it's part of the timeline. Yeah, I wasn't so too big something. on the uh, on the Eternals when it came out. Like, I wanted to watch it, and then I honestly, really, I don't remember anything from that movie. Um, it's not good. Don't remember it. It, it's not that it wasn't well i guess you could say yeah i just don't remember any i don't remember shang chi either like i don't remember anything from that movie spider-man i remember everything from that movie um yeah dr strange too I'm, I'm not gonna talk about spoilers yeah, have- but some of the what ifs do play a factor into dr strange multiverse of madness oh. so when oh, you do cool. watch it you'll see a lot of uh, some references and cameos from the what if series in this movie oh Okay, so then I will recognize it. And the husband went to see that in theaters when it came out day of. Mm -hmm. And he was like, ah, I'm really so maybe if he has seen those, maybe he would have got a little bit more entertainment from the new movie. Yeah, my sister was one that had to tell me, oh, this is from What If. I'm like, oh, and some of it I knew because I haven't watched What If, but some of it I knew and some of it I didn't. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Okay. And there, like I said in the last episode, there is one cameo that everybody kept saying this actor needs to play that character, and they went ahead and did it. I was ex- I was so happy. I was like, "Oh, y'all did it! You, you <laughs> clever bastards! You did it! You did it! Good for you, Disney! Stop muting my videos and blocking my YouTube stuff." <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, that's actually uh, all that's new. That's all that's new for me too. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, the, uh, uh, apologies in advance though, guys, I should have said this before. I know that we said the last episode or on our last episode, that it was going to be retro versus modern. Uh, we delayed that. Huh? You said the special word of the day. We've delayed that episode a couple times. So hopefully that will be the, it won't be the next episode that we record, but it'll be a soonish episode because, uh, holiday. We're, holiday. So we're going to record something different on Monday. I'm not sure what. Uh, we'll we'll discuss that off stream, off off stream, off camera. What we're gonna record after this? Um, maybe it's just another shooting the shooting the shit episode. Yeah, 
Um, Maybe. We did game we'll delays. We could even talk about the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox One, how they are comparing now compared to when they first released. You know, something like that. Yeah. Um, stay tuned for more. Of course, yeah, you can find us here. You can find us here on YouTube. You can find us uh, on Twitch, except for Matt, because now he's he's a getting away from us now <laughs> i mean you can still you can still follow there but just don't expect me to stream every week i had already limited it limited it limited yeah, it limited. to one day a week and then i was just like i just didn't i didn't like sending my audience from one platform to the other the youtube people weren't going to twitch twitch people weren't going to youtube i said you know what screw it we're going to one place and one place only i want all my content to be in one place and like I said, my YouTube stuff is doing, I mean, it may not be getting a thousand gajillion views right off the bat, but it's still getting views. Like, yeah, today. my Final Fantasy uh, part two stream is still getting views. It's almost to a hundred. And I streamed that part like two weeks ago and it's well, people found... still, people still finding it and watching it. I don't know if it's because I said it's a first playthrough or what, but sometimes that works. Sometimes if you do yeah. a first playthrough, people want to see your reactions to a first playthrough. So um, as far as my retro stuff goes is it's hit or miss on those uh some of them are doing well some of them are eh, you know we'll see um but all the links are below correct yes In all our... the links should be below i usually just copy and paste every link from each episode to the next one so you can find all the links down there for mittens channel my channels um i, th I believe i have your link tree i really need to get my link tree in there too so that i can uh, just have one link for me and one link only. And then I also have my buddy's uh, links down there as well. He helps me with this, with the videos. Like he promotes them to his page and everything. Um, in fact, he said, he sent me a screenshot the other day and the most viewed or most streamed video on his app was one of my videos. It was like 7,000 streams. I don't remember what it was, but it was something that I was like, holy crap. I didn't think anybody was even watching that video. Sure enough, they were. I think it was my Crash oh, Bandicoot awesome. uh, kid, not kid robot, a Crash Bandicoot unboxing I did like in 2018. I think that's the one that's been streamed the most. It's like 7,000 streams on his app. And I was like, damn, I did not think anybody was. It was that video because I went back to see how it was doing on YouTube. It's still at about 1,000 views, but on his app, it's been watched 7,000 times. And like I said, I just did not expect that to happen. I thought that video was just going to flop. And then I looked at it one day. I was like, oh boy, there's people watch this. It's out of sync. It was out of sync the whole time and they still watched it. <laughs> <laughs> um, any questions, topics, suggestions you want us to start talking about? Give us a holler. Any one of us, you can definitely uh, send us some links or something you want us to discuss and we'll do that. Also, if you want to listen to this podcast on Spotify, it is now live. The first three episodes are live on, on Spotify. Thank you, Mittens, for taking care of that for me. I have no idea what the hell I'm doing with Spotify, but thank you for that. Um, I did get a thumbnail for this episode, so I'll be sending all that to you uh, within the week. Um, I just got to get this one edited and uploaded. Uh, this episode will probably, if you're watching it now, it's probably Wednesday. Uh, so if you are watching this episode and you have made it to this point, just know that I'm going to be flip flopping videos this week. So I Wednesday's video will likely be the podcast and then Wednesday's original video will be Friday's video. So the review for this week will probably be Friday and then the playthrough for Friday will be next week because I don't like to do two videos in one day. I like to have Monday podcast, Tuesday stream, Wednesday review, Thursday stream, Friday playthrough. Some people do two or three videos in one day. That's okay if you're doing shorts, but like longer videos, it's better to just stick to one a day. Yeah. Um, other than that, I've got nothing else to add. Um, if you have anything else to add, you know, if not, then uh, I guess we will go ahead and uh, sign off here. Yeah, I think we're good. I think we had a, a good discussion today. And uh, we'll get to see you next week after the holiday. Yeah. And uh, thank you guys again for watching. I hope you are enjoying this ep these episodes of Geeking Out. Oh, God, at that time, I almost messed up. Uh, <laughs> thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, if you are enjoying the videos, please be sure to hit that thumbs up. Ring the bell to be notified when videos go live. Share it with your friends and family. And we will see you all in the next episode. Y'all have a good one and a good holiday. Good Memorial Day. Yes. Bye, guys.